Philippians chapter 4. This morning, the, the subject I would like to share with you um, is it, it touches on a place with me. And so it just might with you. And for me, um, I find this just a little bit painful because it's, it's one of those things where if you deal with it, it's a little bit painful for you. So hopefully, it's not painful for you, just painful for me. But I'd like to share with you this morning from Philippians chapter 4, a, a recipe. And, you know, we have a pretty good idea of recipes. And something I would like to share with you this morning is the recipe for Brother Gary Pugh's fudge. I don't know if any of you have ever had Brother Gary Pugh's fudge, and, but if you have, you probably have a, a somewhat of a preference. I do. Peanut butter rules. Okay? Doesn't it? Peanut butter rules. The chocolate is great if you put it on the peanut butter. <laughs> They're both really good. But, I mean, if you want to make the ultimate Reese cup, you put some of his peanut butter on top of the fudge. No, I mean the, the peanut butter on top of the chocolate, because chocolate rains, remember, and bite that together. Aye. Peanut butter rules. So I'd like to share with you his recipe this morning. Actually... I would like to give you his recipe to his fudge this morning if I had it. But I don't. That recipe and that fudge would make the folks in Gatlinburg embarrassed. It is so good. It is so creamy. It just melts in your mouth. And he's going to have 10 pounds of it out there for sale after church. <laughs> no, not really. There's a recipe to that, and I would say he probably follows the exact same recipe every single time. At least, if he's ever thrown any, thrown of any, any of it out, I don't know about it. But any time I've ever got some of it, it always tastes the same. Very creamy, melt in your mouth, very peanutty. Peanutty? Peanut, do you use peanut butter? Is that what goes in it? Yeah. It's probably homemade peanut butter, too. You know, the thing about it, usually it's here, and, and those of you who have been here for a while, when you go out to like a fellowship or something and you see it, you recognize it and you know to snap it up. The guests don't know anything about that. And so they get left out. They don't, I, but I recognize it as soon as I see it. I pretty much guarantee you that every time he makes it, the recipe is probably locked in Atlanta there with the Coke recipe. But it's probably in his head every time exactly what to do, when, and how, and which, which ingredients to use, and how long to cook it, and bake it, and fry it, and whatever it is he does to it, to make it come out the way we get every time. And as best I can tell, every single time it's tasted the same. Wonderful. It's a recipe we're going to be looking at this morning. And we have the authority of the Almighty of God Almighty, we have His authority that if we will follow this recipe to a T, that we will get the end results that He promises. Because His promises never fail. And so, what you're going to see here in this passage in Philippians chapter 4 is a recipe and a result. In other words, you're going to get the ingredients to the fudge, and then you get something far, far, far more valuable than the fudge. As much as we love the fudge, this is far, far more valuable, especially in the day in which we live. Um, we're living in days that I've, you know, through my lifetime, there's been times in our country and in our society where things have come and things have gone. But I've never seen anything like this. 
I don't know about you in your lifetime and things that you've seen, but I've not seen things in our country and in our society like I'm seeing right now. And I think that makes this passage uh, even more pertinent, valuable, uh, applicable to our lives today, maybe more than ever before. But before we dive in, let's pray. Father, I pray, we pray that you will help us as we look into your word to see clearly the guidelines that you have instructed for your people. And Father, we have your word, we have your promise based on your truth and your honesty and your straightforwardness that we will get the end result if we follow your guidelines, if we follow your word as clearly presented in this passage. Father, help me to clearly present it. Lord, that we might understand and go from this place with a clear understanding of what you have for us today. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Look there in chapter 4, scan down to uh, verse 6, and we'll read three, three or four verses here, and then we'll kind of back up and kind of take it a little piece at a time. Chapter 4 of Philippians and verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in every thing, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God. Now, what we, what we read there in verse 6 and what we read in verse 8 are the ingredients to the fudge. Verse 7 is the results of putting everything together properly according to God's Word. Verse 7, here's the results. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. More of the ingredients in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, Think on these things. I've, I've never researched it. I probably should research it. But as I understand it, there are 365 different times in the Bible where the Bible teaches us and commands us to fear not. To be not afraid. And we are living in a time where a lot of folks are afraid. They're fearful. There's a lot of worry going on. Uh, I think I shared this maybe Wednesday night a week ago that the FBI reported, I think somewhere around 170,000 FBI background checks for gun purchases in one day. 170,000 in one day. And that, along with a lot of other things, are indicators that we are living in a society of people who are fearful, who are worried, who are afraid who are concerned, very concerned, about what they see going on around them, not only in their community, not only in our country, but in our world today. And it's not always just worried or concerned about what's happening right now. It's concern and worry about the days ahead. And Jesus had something to say about that. 
that sufficient unto the day is the concerns thereof. We have a tendency to pro pro project ourselves what's going to happen in the future, and I am right in there with you. With my grandchildren, it is easy to, to, to rationalize myself and say, okay, I'm not worried about what's going to happen to me, but I can get away with it if I worry about what's going to happen to my children or my grandchildren. Well, I'm afraid that I'm concerned that this covers all of that too. And it very well could be that this worry and this fear and this concern is creeping uh, not just into our culture, but into the church and into God's people. And that we are experiencing a lot of the sleeplessness and the worry and the, the fears that is consuming a lot of people in our society. And God here gives us an answer, a clear answer to this. Now, there's a lot of times that the instructions in Scripture are very pointed to our need. And because they're so pointed to me, sometimes it makes me uncomfortable. And usually if I'm uncomfortable with it, that's a signal that I need it, okay? <laughs> it's a signal that I need it if I'm uncomfortable with it. If I don't like what it says, it probably needs, I, I, I need it even more. And so I would title the message today, Be Not Afraid. Be Not Afraid. I love the story there in Matthew chapter 14. And it... It represents, and you might want to go home today and maybe read Matthew chapter 14 or this week in your devotions, read Matthew 14. But you have, you have a scene there where you see us the way we are. Us. Jesus, in his, when He was on earth, when He walked with men, He walked with people just like us. And He dealt with people just like us. Frail, weak, just even among His disciples, the chosen ones, they were so much like us. But anyway, He's there in northern, in northern Israel, in Galilee, and He has just performed one of the biggest miracles, most well-known miracles that He ever performed. He took five loaves and two fishes, and fed probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 10, maybe 15,000 people. There were 5,000 men that it tells us about. Well, you can probably very, very well guarantee probably more than that of the ladies. At least maybe another 5,000. And that did not count the teenagers and the children that would have been there to see this take place. Wouldn't it have been something to see that? Five loaves, two fish feeding possibly somewhere ten to 15,000 people. And the disciples were there, and they actually participated in the whole thing. Amazing thing that they got to witness. I witnessed to this account. After that's over, Jesus is going to dismiss the multitudes, and He puts His disciples in a, in a boat or a small ship, probably a good-sized boat, and sends them across the Sea of Galilee, he goes to a mountain to pray. And when he finishes praying, he comes down, and there is a raging storm going on on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus starts walking from the shore out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee in this raging storm. And the disciples are afraid, being in this storm. And now they're really afraid. They look out probably in the bolts of lightning and they see someone <laughs> they see someone walking through the waves. The may astounding thing to see. They walk either they see him walking through the waves. And they're afraid it says. And Peter, being Peter, says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come to you. And the Lord Jesus says, come. 
And Peter being Peter, climbs over the rail. Braver than me. He climbs over the rail and begins to walk on the water. And if you read it carefully, it says that Peter was actually walking on the water until he messed up. He took his eyes off the Lord. And he began to look the storm that was going on around him. The wind, probably the lightning, the thunder. I mean, it, those things can be a little bit, you know, nerve-wracking. Those things can be rough on shore. But he's out there and he's on the waves. He's looking at the waves and he takes his eye off of the Lord and begins to look at the storm. And that's when he begins to sink. And we're going to see that in this passage. That our focus, our daily focus, our minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, what we focus on is critical. Very important what we focus on. And we see that mostly in verse 8. But let's look back up to verse 6 and let's look at this a little more carefully. And I would put this into maybe a three-point outline if you like those. Do not panic, simply pray and enjoy peace is how this passage really it breaks down. Chapter 6. It, first of all, it says right there, the first two words, be careful. And there's going to be a few times with this, with this verse 6, I'm going to get very sophisticated with you. And I'm going to tell you the Greek word. Woo-hoo. Maramino is the Greek word for careful. Be careful. We could say the careful there could be worried Panicked, alarmed, anxious, distressed, scared, distressed, nervous, fearful. The word actually means to be anxious about. If you, if you look it up, it's G3309, Maramino, it's used twice. And it means to be anxious about, or to take care of, or to take thought about. So here's the, that's the word, be careful. For what? Huh? For what? Nothing. Now, the Greek word there is medais. It means, get this, it means nothing. Be careful for nothing. Not even one. It says, if you read it in Strong's Concordance, it'll say, not even one. Not even one thing. Not any, it says in Strong's. None. Not, <laughs> it says there in Strong's, not even a wit. I would say not a bit. <laughs> not even a wit. Be careful for nothing. Not even a wit, not even, I would say, a bit. Now, is that a confusing? Is there anything about that that's confusing? No. That is clear command from God's Word, from the Apostle Paul to the Philippians to us in this day, even in this day, it says, there in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be careful for nothing. Not even a whit. Not one little bit. So the question comes, okay, how do I do that in the day in which we live? with so much, and I'm not even going to list 
all the things that are going on around us, you've probably got 24-7 news and you probably know a whole lot better than I do. I've got rabbit ears or kind of look like, no, rabbit ears don't look like that. Um, but I, I've kind of tuned the rabbit ears out pretty much too. I'm kind of done with a lot of that. But anyway, in our society, how can you do this? Well, there's a recipe here, and that's what we're, that's what we're really talking about. That's what we're after here, how to get there. The recipe. And here it comes. But, and that's the, that's the great word right there, but in everything, and the Greek word there for everything is pos. It means all, any, every, and the whole. It all, every bit of that stuff is to go here. But in every, and Paul's using strong terms here in emphasizing the details of this recipe. Don't miss one. Because I guarantee you, if you leave the peanut butter out of the fudge, it won't taste like peanut butter fudge. Okay? So don't miss one piece of the recipe. It's all here, and it needs to be taken as a whole if you're going to get the fudge, okay? And so Paul's given us, he's given us here, God, the Father, is given us the recipe to be able to live like this. But by prayer, but in everything, every sickness, Every illness, every election, every riot, every thing, every doctor's visit, just go right on down the list. In every thing, by prayer, and that's that word there means praying earnestly, by prayer and supplication are petitions. We are to take these things that worry us, that make us fearful. The idea here from the Holy Spirit, from God, written by the Apostle Paul, is that all these things that are on our minds and churning on our heads, to not allow those wheels to go round and round and round inside there, but for them to come out and to go to the throne. Now, you know, um, I've heard it said that worry just doesn't really fix much. And I would have to agree with that. Worry just doesn't fix much. But boy, does prayer fix a lot of things. When we stop our worrying and that churning in our minds, the worrying, when we take that out of our minds and deliver that to the throne of the Almighty, that is one of the ingredients in where we want to get. That in every single thing, every wit, every bit, small and great, that we take those things that are churning in our minds, whether it's personal, whether it's family, whether it's national, whether it's global, whatever it is, take it to someone who can do something about it. Take it to the Lord. That's an ingredient. Take those things to the Lord. And then... While you're on your knees and you're taking those things or in your car driving and you are taking those things that are grinding in your head, you're taking those things to the throne. When that's all unloaded, all of it, every wit, every bit, when that's all unloaded, finish with that long laundry list of things that you have to be thankful for. 
your family, your friends, your church, God Almighty, salvation, the fact that you're born again, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you have a home, that you have uh, all the things that you have and that you enjoy and, and just start making a list and, and bring those to Him too because that's part of the recipe to take the concerns and the fears of things that we have in our lives, whether small or big, whatever it is, we take those to the throne and then when we've unloaded that whole truckload of whatever that is, then we begin to praise Him and thank Him for all the things, the way He's taken care of us all of our lives, how He's provided for us, how He's brought us through all different things and given us family and friends and our church family and just start, just start thanking God for all the things that He has given you. That's part of the recipe. Don't miss one. I would recommend that you handwrite these three verses. Handwrite them and maybe stick them in your wallet, stick them in your purse. If you really want to see it a lot, tape it to your cell phone. On your mirror. And memorize those, these steps. I was talking to someone. This has probably been within the last, I'm sure within the last couple of months. And this person, we were, we were having a meal together. They were sitting across the table. And we got to talking about some of this in regards to what's going on in our world. And this person said that they had come to this passage and here's what they would do. When something would get grinding, 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 fears, whatever, that they would try to immediately identify that and they would stop and here's what they would do. This is what this person sitting across the booth from me said. I would stop and I would say, Father, that's sin. Now that's a, that's a big step in the, in the thing right there. I've never been to an AA meeting, but what I understand is the first step to recovery is acknowledging the problem. And then you have, you have launched yourself light years ahead in solving the problem, whatever it is. Acknowledging the problem. Saying it out loud to God. Father, this is sin. You've got my back. You've always had my back. You will always have my back. Why am I tore up about this? That's what they said. They said, first of all, first thing I'd do is I'd say, Father... This is sin, and I confess it as sin to you. And here's what I'm concerned about, and they would unload that on God. And God's strong enough, His shoulders are big enough to handle every bit of it. So take it to Him, every bit. Unload every bit. Don't leave anything unsaid. Unload your fears, concerns to Him. And then start praising Him and thanking Him for all the things that He has done, and He has given, and He has provided and where He has always been there for us, and just start praising Him. And they, here's what they said. They said it took weeks. They said, I would do that over and over and over again on the same day. They said it took weeks. But they said, all of a sudden, I realized I got the fudge. I got the fudge. And they got the result of what he says in verse 7. But it was something that they did over, and they, they, what they told me was they were relentless. When it got to churning on their mind, Father, please forgive me. I'm worried. I'm concerned. I'm fearful about this. And it's sin. Name it. Name it. Go ahead. I know it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for me to even say it. But when you disobey, when, when, when there's a direct command so clearly put in Scripture, you really can't call it anything else but what it is. Because the command here in Scripture is, don't do it. Isn't it? Is it, is it am I missing something? Is it, say, is it not saying clearly, don't be fearful. Don't be careful for not anything. It's being very clear. 
And so to not do that is sin. It'll help us if we will name it what it really is and not try to rename it as, oh, Lord, I messed up. No, no, no. Name it what it is. We sin too. And if you want, if you want to get the result, don't skip any parts of the recipe. You'll end up with some yucky tasting fudge. Okay? Don't miss any part. What they said was they would repent and we, like everybody else, need to repent of our sin. And they said it took weeks, but they said it was extremely effective. And those fears went away, constantly taking them to God, taking them to God, over and over. And it not only doesn't, it not only does it not wear God out, it pleases Him because it's obedience. Taking those concerns, taking those thoughts, taking those worries to Him in prayer, and then thanking Him for all the things. You see this recipe unfolding. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. All right. That's really a pretty simple recipe as far as understanding. Practice, it may take us some work. But you have God's Word that you'll get this. Here is the fudge. Okay, verse 6, verse 7. And the peace of God. And that peace, that's E. It's almost like Irene is the Greek word for that. You're going to get sophisticated on you again. Irene, and the peace, I don't know, but maybe that's where the name Irene comes from. Maybe the Irene means peace, I don't know. Hadn't thought about that till just now. Let's look it up. Somebody Google no. it. <laughs> don't Google it. You can Google it after church. What does the name Irene mean? But it looks like Irene, the Greek word. Quietness, rest, peace. Set at one again. Isn't that what we want? Don't we, don't we want to be able to go through our lives in a society that's a storm and that's in turmoil? You know, and our worries aren't going to stop that storm. But boy, for us to be able to walk through the storm and to enjoy peace and tranquility and rest and good sleep at night while the storm is raging all over the world. That's what God has for you. That's what He wants for me. This world's going to always have its troubles, but He wants us to go through in peace. And look how it's described here. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's a peace. What, he's, what, the, what God is telling us here, that if you will relentlessly follow the recipe, you will get a peace in your life that probably you will not even understand. And that is contagious. For you to enjoy that kind of peace with all that's going around us, that will open doors. That is contagious. Let me tell you something too, folks. Fear is contagious too. If you have a home with children in it and you're fearful, your kids will catch it. They'll catch on to it. If you're peaceful and you're at rest and you're at peace in your heart with all that's going on, it'll be contagious to your children and to your grandchildren. Peace is contagious. And let's be very infectious about this. And the peace of God which passeth 
all understanding. Evidently, God has quite the peace in mind for us. I'm going to digress here for just a minute. Please forgive me in advance. Some of you in here are young enough to remember the movie Lion King. Remember Lion King? Simba. Little Simba. You guys are probably too young to remember Lion King. <laughs> I'm not sure everybody in here is going to know about Lion King. I don't know what your feelings are about the movie, but there was a scene that I really liked, and I might have to get some help from some of you. That I don't know if anybody saw it more than I did. <laughs> did they? <laughs> I did, maybe I didn't see it a lot, but I heard it quite a bit. There's this one scene that I like. And little Simba is a little lion cub, just a little fella. And he's as cute as a button. And he's in line to be the king of the kingdom. But he's just a little fella. And he's out there, and he's adventuring where he's not supposed to go. And these hyenas, who are the bad guys, start surrounding him. Ah, I see you guys have watched the movie, haven't you? I see, I can tell you've watched the movie. The hyenas start coming around him, and buddy, they're hungry. And they are looking, they've got lunch in their sight. And the, the, rain, the, the, the king in line is right before them, all alone out there. And the hyenas, oh, they're cackling and they're hungry and they're gathering around. And little Simba, he puffs up just as much as he can. He's going to let out his lion roar and it comes out kind of, meow. <laughs> and, and the hyenas start laughing, laughing. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Listen to the king, listen to the king. And a little something goes, meow, and it just, it just won't come out. And boy, the hyenas are just having fun with him. And finally, oh Simba, he puffs up real big, takes a deep breath, and it comes out. And the place just shakes. And the hyenas are like, the fears are leaving. And Simba turns around. And who's back there? His father. His father is right behind him. And when little Simba tried to get that little squeak out, this roar came out. And all the fear was gone when Daddy showed up. God's got our back. Every second, every minute of every day, God's got our back. And really the truth of it is, think about this. When I'm, I'll use myself as an example. I won't pick on you, I'll pick on me. When I'm fearful about this or that or the other, and I'm worried about this or that or another, what am I saying about my God? What am I saying? God, you're not, you don't really have my back. This, I know you've taken care of the other thing, but you don't, you don't have, these are hyenas, these are bad hyenas, these are different hyenas than the other hyenas you ran off. These are different. These are new. You haven't, I haven't seen you do these ones. Be careful. I, I want to be careful about these fears and these concerns when I know that I've got an all-powerful, all-knowing, totally sovereign God who knows all about what's going on in the world. He knows every detail of my life and He's got my back. Okay, we'll read this last verse here. This will be pretty much it for the morning. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, 
Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue or excellence. And if there be any praise. Think on these things. That is part of the ingredients. Take those concerns, those fears to God. Every wit, everything. Number one. Number two. Spend time in thanksgiving. And number three. Be careful of your focus. What it is you're looking at. I know we have for years and years, you know, in the youth department, we would say to the teens, be careful about the music. Be careful what you listen to, and it's legitimate. Be careful about your music. Be careful what you read. You are so much of what you are because of what you read and what you listen to and what you look at. That so much affects us. Be careful about those things and make sure they fit the criteria of things that we should be thinking about. I remember when I was growing up, to watch the news, you had to show up at a specific time at like 6 o'clock in the evening, and then like 6.30 was the national news, and maybe 11 o'clock maybe, and that's it. And it was all good news then too. And it was all true. Like it's all true today. Now it's a thousand stations at 24 hours. Oh, I caution you. A lot of the news would be eliminated by the part there where it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Wouldn't a lot of the news be eliminated right there? Whatsoever things are honest, there went the other half. Let me tell you folks, you know, I don't want to be too hard on them, but I don't think they're on our side. I don't think they're on our side. These folks who are presenting the good news every day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, I don't think they even really like us at all. I don't think they care for our God. I don't think they care for His Word. I don't think they care for us. Let's be careful how much time we give to them. You're going to have to. You're absolutely going to have to be careful about that. And you may have to make some major changes about that if you want to accomplish the fudge. Okay. If you want to enjoy the peace of God which passes all understanding that shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, you're going to have to mind the recipe item by item, step by step, and not miss any of it. Otherwise, you don't have any promise from the Lord to enjoy that kind of peace. You're going to have, I'm going to have to follow. Like that person I was talking about. They would confess the fear of sin. They would give thanksgiving. Careful about what they look at, what they listen to, who they allow in their hearts and their minds. And it, it, they were relentless with that recipe over and over again. They told me, for weeks. And then it came. And they said they didn't have to deal with that anymore. It worked. It doesn't cost so much either. It's not an expensive recipe. It won't cost you a penny. But I would be relentless in these days. And that peace, hopefully, as you enjoy that peace that passes that rest, that tranquility in the midst of the storm, hopefully then it will spread to your family, to your spouse, to your children, to your grandchildren, to your church family, to your co-workers, to your teammates, and they can begin to see a light in the midst of the darkness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for such wonderful, amazing, and rich promises. 
that your word so clearly gives us. Father, I pray that these truths will sink down into our hearts. And Father, that we will make changes, adjustments, that we will follow your recipe for peace that passes all understanding. Father, we want that peace. We want to live in rest and tranquility and peace. Help us, Father, to not miss one part of what you have given us to achieve that goal. And we know that if we follow your word, that you will keep yours. Well, we pray that you'll help us in this area to be an effective witness to all of those around us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together as Miss Kim plays. I think this would be a really good time to just, you can come forward if you like. You can sit there and pray. Stand there and pray. And just make a commitment to just commit to the Lord and to yourself, to ourselves, to myself. That Father, this is what I want. I want to live my life in these days in a peace that passes all understanding. And it's a good time to commit to this passage. It would be a good time to commit to memorization of these two verses, even the three verses, that that would be our standard of the things that we focus on and that that would be the standard of how we would live our lives. Commit that. Make that a commitment. That it, from this day forward, Father, commit to the Lord. Commit to your Heavenly Father. That you'll take whatever steps are necessary to follow this recipe to a T. And you'll follow it for as long as it takes. If it's days, weeks, months, whatever it takes. Father, I'm going to do it your way. And I'm going to take you up on your promise. Commit that to the Lord. and Leave here today with that determination in your mind. Write it down. Write those verses down. Keep them in your pocket. Put them on the mirror. Memorize the recipe carefully and follow it dutifully. And allow the peace of God that passes all understanding to flood your life. Father, we pray that you'll help us to do that today. As we go from this place, may we be determined to be a people of peace and confidence and courage as we go through these days. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.